WBBM FM, Chicago. <laughs> The makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum invite you to enjoy life, Life with Luigi, a comedy show created by Cy Howard, directed by Mac Benoff, and starring that celebrated actor, Mr. J. Carroll Nash, with Alan Reed as Pasquale. Friends, the makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum are glad to bring you Life with Luigi because they feel it's a friendly, good-natured show that offers you relaxation and enjoyment. And you know, Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum offers you relaxation and enjoyment, too. It's pleasant to chew on a smooth piece of Wrigley's Spearmint whether you're working, shopping, listening to your radio, or doing just about anything. Wrigley's Spearmint Gum tastes good. It's refreshing. And the good, easy chewing gives you comfort and satisfaction. Now, Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum brings you Luigi as he writes another letter describing his adventures in America to his mama Basco in Italy. Dear Mamma Mia. You know, you last the letter, you want to know if American girls, they're really so beautiful. Well, mamma me, all I'm going to say, if Columbus knew what I know, he would have discovered America in 1941. <laughs> I mean, in 1491. <laughs> but last week, I had a date with a summer girl. Somebody's introduced me over the telephone. In America, this is called a blind date. This means you don't know how the girl looks, she don't know how you look, and if you both don't like your looks, you go out the body, you don't look at each other. <laughs> anyway, I went to this girl's house, and she's yelled down from upstairs, just a second, Luigi, I'm going to put on my face and zip up on my back. <laughs> Mama me, I'm a thought for sure that girl would have come down in three pieces. <laughs> then I found out that put on your face means... The girl puts on the lipstick, the rouge, powder, mascara, and something that's called eyeshadows. <laughs> I'm not sure why they do this, but, but it's supposed to make the girl look like she's forgot to go to sleep for the whole week. <laughs> well, I'm, I had a good time, but nobody's have a worse time than my countryman Pasquale after he's found out Mamma mia, you know how ever since he's brought me to America, he's trying to push his fat daughter or son of me, and I'm pushing right back on him? <laughs> well, now, Pasquale, Pasquale is a madder than ever, and right now, as I'm looking at his spaghetti restaurant, I can see Pasquale in a rosa with the head together. Rosa? Yes, Papa? I don't know what's going to be with you. 29 years old, you're still a bachelor. <laughs> Don't you want to have a husband, a home, or some responsibility? Rosa, put down that comic book and listen to me. Yes, Papa. What's with Luigi? Did you see him yet today? No, Papa. Did you see him yesterday? No, Papa. No, Papa. No, Papa. <laughs> Is it possible for you to say yes, sir, Papa? No, Papa. <laughs> I mean, yes, I can say no. Oh. Oh, and a double O. Look, what happened Sunday night when I talked Luigi into taking you for a walk in the park? We walked, Papa. That's all you did was walk, I suppose. Well, I wanted to sit on the bench. Luigi wanted to keep walking. So? So I sat on the bench. Luigi kept walking. (laughs) You mean you let him get away from you? Oh, no. I ran after him. Then we went window shopping. Uh, Then what happened? I stopped in front of a jewelry store, Uh and I hinted. I said, Luigi, it's leap year. And what did he say? He said, leap! <laughs> oh, that a smart Alex. Then what happened? Then he bought me some hot dogs, then he took me home. Ah, ah and, and did you kiss him a good night? No, Papa. Why not? I was still eating a hot dog. <laughs> Ross, what am I going to do with you? Don't you know anything about a husband a-catching? Do I got to go out personally and tie Luigi up a hands and a foot and hand him over to you? Would you, Papa? Sure, sure. Maybe you want I should go out and marry Luigi myself and then sign him over to you after the wedding. (laughs) What 
Nancy is so funny. Papa, if you married Luigi, then I'd be his sister. <laughs> Go ahead and laugh for my daughter so you shouldn't hear your papa cry. I'm sorry, Papa. That's all right, my baby. It's not of your fault if a God will give you a big appetite. <laughs> Gee, you make me hungry. Oh, gross. I'm going to go next door, have a little talk with that stubborn donkey. Meanwhile, remember this. 1952 is a leap year. My plan is you should stay with Luigi every minute this year. But Papa... Don't a Papa me. Papa the question. <laughs> oh. But Papa, Luigi works by day and he goes to school by night. When can I see him? He lunches with him. He eats with shorts and a delicatessen. Then a walk with the school or with him. He walks with Clancy, the cop. Well, meet him after school. He comes home with his friends. Oh, that a pup squeak? He's got his own eye on a curtain. <laughs> well, we're going to find us somewhere to get you close to him. You, you watch the store, Rosa. I'm going to have a little talk with this boy. Yes, Papa. Yes, Papa. Yes, Papa. Now, let me see. i got a plan in my strategy. Luigi, my friend. Hello, Luigi. Hello, hello. Uh, hello, Pasquale. Uh, it's a nice day, huh? Beautiful. Uh, business is, is a pretty good for me lately, Pasquale. Good, good. I, uh, what, what's new with you? Oh, not the same old stuff, the same old grinds. And uh, how's it, Rosa? Rosa? Who's that? <laughs> oh, Pascali, stop it. You know she's your daughter? Oh, yes. Since she got married, I don't see her so much. <laughs> Rosa's married? To who? To ex Xavier Kugat. Good. <laughs> stop playing so dumb. You know she's saving herself only for you. Pascali, there's a plenty of other fellas in Chicago. Why do you want to... I should have a Rosa. For three reasons. One, you got a good character. Two, you come from a good family. Three, nobody else wants her. <laughs> oh, don't, don't say that, Pasquale. Rosa is a very good girl. She's got a sweet face, and her shape is going to be beautiful. Ever she's ever lose two, three hundred pounds. <laughs> Would you, will you stop talking like a weightlifter? Believe me, you would never be happy with a skinny little wife. All the same, Pasquale, I'm a once to promise myself I'm never going to marry no girl that I can't lift up. All right, marry Rosa, I buy you a Derek. <laughs> <laughs> I never heard of such a crazy talk. Yeah, but Pasquale, any, and anyway, with, uh, without the money... Oh, I'm... money, again with the money. Luigi, don't you know, the minute you marry Rosa, Truman declares her a dependent. Now, this means the government sends you $600 of cash every year in the taxes. $600? Sure. And if you've got a 10 kids with her, right away the government sends you $6,000 a year. Mamma mia. And if you keep on having the kids, the treasurer is going to open up with the treasury and say, go ahead, Luigi, help yourself. <laughs> Well, <laughs> what do you say, little banana nose? Pasquale, don't rush me into a quick wedding. What the quick? Look, Luigi, you say yes. I promise you, you are going to let you walk down that middle aisle as, as slow as you want. Pasquale, I'm, I'm sorry, but, but I'm going to go to my night school oh, now. school, school. Why don't you be a good boy, quit school, and start to hang around Rosa a little more? You'd be surprised that that girl's going to grow out of you like a beautiful flower on a pot. Pasquale, keep your pot. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not going to quit tonight to school. All right, now wait, Luigi. We're going to compromise. A Saturday, you don't go to school. So here, take these two tickets. Oh, well, what are they for, Pasquale? Free passes to the movies. It's a nice, sad love story, Luigi. But, Pasquale, I like the funny ones. All right, so while everybody else cries, you laugh. <laughs> Pasquale, I, I, I don't know if I can go this Saturday. You see, I... I'm a promise of my night school of friends. If a day was going to the planetarium, I was going to. Planet? What do you want to see plants for? Oh, come on. Come on, Luigi. Start the new year off right. Take Rosa to the movies. Get to know her better. Well, I'm going to see Pasquale. If my friends are going to go to the planetarium... Will you then... forget the sanitarium, please? <laughs> now, look. Let's stop playing cats and mouses. This Saturday, you take her to Rosa to the movies or else. Oh, that's why, the Pasquale. My rent is all paid up and you can't throw me out of the antique no, shop. No, but I could raise your rent. All right, so I'm going to pay. From a $50 a month to $500 a month. Hi. Five hundred dollars a month. Yes, and you better start hanging around Rosa this year, Luigi. Pasquale is a no gonna die, an old maid. (laughs) 
No, but the media is probably going to send it down. All right, attention class, please. I'll call the roll. Mr. Basco? Here. Mr. Horowitz? Here. Mr. Olson? Mr. Schultz? Don't give up the ship. Lafayette, we are here. Listen to me, my heart is pumping like it discovered oil. Mr. Schultz, that's the second time this week you've come late to class. What's your excuse this time? Oh, well, you see, Miss Spalding, uh, my wife just had a... No, she didn't. I, uh, the streetcar broke down. I, I stopped to help an old lady. And... All right, I ain't got no excuse. Give me the gas chamber and let's get on with the lesson. All right, Mr. Schultz, there's another late mark against you. And another one for unnecessary disturbance. Looks like Miss Spalding woke up this morning on the wrong side of the desk. <laughs> Don't try that again, Mr. Schultz. Mr. Basco, what are you whispering to everyone? I mean, I'm not going to, Miss Spalding. Come now, speak up. Well, I... I was just asking Horowitz if he wants to come with me to the planetarium this is Saturday night. Mr. Basco, ask Mr. Horowitz that question after class. Now, my first question for tonight's Besides lesson... Besides Miss Spalding, like I was telling Luigi, Saturdays I got to go see my mother-in-law. It's a bad habit I started just after I got married. <laughs> I didn't ask you, Mr. Horowitz. The first you, question... And I couldn't go this Saturday because I am taking Olga to a real interesting lecture. Uh, by Dr. Hugo Kuhn. <laughs> <laughs> he is speaking on uh, the sociological significance of economic cycles as reflected in the mores and customs of our national groups. <laughs> Is that the title or the lecture at that? <laughs> Heavens, what's happened to this class? A demerit each for you, Mr. Olson, and Mr. Horowitz, and Mr. Basco. Well, in that case, I'll help myself to one, too. <laughs> Luigi, this Saturday, my wife and I go out to celebrate our wedding anniversary. And I... Stop it this instant, all of you. I, I never please, heard... Please, please, Miss Spalding. I'm going to take all the blame, but... But is it because I'm... I'm got a big problem. Mr. Basco, just what is your problem? Well, uh, Pasquale is made up his mind. I'm going to see more of Ross in 1952. So this is Saturday. He wants... I should have started by taking her to the movies. Well, I'm tired of hearing about that problem. Now, either you get down to work or you can leave. Now, the first question... Luigi, is... why don't you tell Pasquale you have a headache that night? No, no, no. no. Last time I had a call, he's a sent in a Ross. She's a massage in my back. It's so hard that three days after the call, was a better. I'm still I couldn't get out of bed. <laughs> All right, now, for the last time. Mom, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Miss Spalding. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, we, we all are. are. We, we all are. Yeah. All right. Now, the question is... Well, what's the matter, Miss Spalding? You interrupted me so much, I forgot the question. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Pasquale, I'm a got to know that it's Saturday night, so, so what's about it? So what's not about it? So you're taking Rosa? No, Pasquale, this is American, and you can't make another American do what he's a don't want to. Just a second, Mr. Half a Citizen. <laughs> half a Citizen? That's all right. The one half is still in Italy. One half is in America. <laughs> so what about it? So you're only half a safe. <laughs> now, you listen to me so I don't start no trouble, Mr. No Citizen of Papers. In a 1952, you've got to see more of Rosa. Pasquale, Rosa weighs a 250 pounds and more of her is impossible to see. <laughs> so why is the crackers like that? Is it going to wind you up in the Husagal? Now, what do you say? You go to the movies or no? All right, Pasquale, I go. What the picture am I going to see? Oh, it's a very good picture, Luigi. They say, is it going to get an Oscar? All right, let the Oscar take a rose. <laughs> no, Luigi, you take a rose, and the picture is a death of a salesman. <laughs> Mamma mia, I'm afraid a death of a salesman is going to be death of a Luigi. <laughs> Before we return to Life with Luigi, here's a little suggestion that may mean a lot to your success and popularity. Make it a regular custom to chew Wrigley's Spearmint Gum, at least a few sticks every day. You see, regular daily chewing is an easy, pleasant way to help keep your teeth clean and bright, your smile attractive. 
Then, too, chewing Wrigley's Spearmint freshens your mouth and helps keep your breath sweet. So you naturally feel more sure of yourself at work and in your social activities. Yes, friends, bright, active teeth and mouth freshness are important to all of us. That's why we say, make it a regular custom to chew refreshing, delicious Wrigley's Spearmint Gum. At least a few sticks every day. You'll enjoy it, and it may be a real aid to your success and popularity. Now let's turn to page two of Luigi Basco's letter to his mother in Italy. Well, Mamma Mia, tonight's the night. I'm going to take Rosa to the movies. And just before, just to make sure I'm going to forget, the Pasquale is put the note under my door. I'm opening it up, and it's one of his Pasquale's poems. Any, many, many more to the movies you must go. If you don't show up by 8 o'clock, there's a boat to Italy down by the dock. <laughs> my fellow boobies. <laughs> hello. Zum, hello. You, you look like a poopy dog greeting the dog catcher. <laughs> What's with Pasquale? Is he still in this thing? Shirts are going. I read, I read this Pasquale is a poem he's a sent to me. Pasquale poem? Mm -hmm. All right. I'm... Doc. Pasquale, the Italian Nick Kenny. <laughs> Luigi, why don't you answer him back with the Pasquale poem? Answer him back? No, sure. Listen to this. Uh, dear Pasquale, your daughter is Charlie, and I take her to the movie when I go off my trolley. Ha, 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 Shosie. Shosie, you're just a crazy. <laughs> That's right, Luigi. <laughs> I hate to see you looking so nervous. <laughs> Who, me? I'm nervous? No, you're not nervous. Only you got a look on your face like a sardine when he hears somebody opening up the can. <laughs> yeah, you're right, the should say. It's because I, I don't like it when a Pasquale says, give me orders, and, and, and I'm afraid not to, to do what he's asking me to do. Ach, I know just how you feel, little Wiener Schnitzel, but put yourself in Pasquale's place. He feels since he put up the money to bring you to America, but... You should show a little appreciation once in a while. Uh -huh, then, then, then he should say, hey, you think I'm wrong? No, huh? I didn't say that, Luigi. <laughs> yeah, but, but he should say, you, you think so, huh? No, Luigi, look. Himmel, I feel like the governor refusing a condemned man a pardon. <laughs> <laughs> Luigi, you shouldn't ask me for advice. You've got to ask your own heart. After all, he's not asking you to marry the girl. He just wants you to take her to the movies. Yeah, but it's just you don't know, Pasquale. He's going to start with the movies every Saturday night. Then he's going to get it to make it the nice meals for me. Then he's going to make a wash up of my clothes, so the socks, iron the shirts, and the... Well, if she does all uh, that, I marry her myself. <laughs> Rosa, get ready. Luigi just said yes. Oh, he's going to marry me now? No, he's just taking you to the movies. Oh, goody, I'll pack up some sandwiches. Ooh, forget <laughs> about food. Now, look, Rosa, we're really going to charm him. You put on your new dress, comb your hair up, and to make you smell especially good, I'm going to lend you my aftershave lotion. <laughs> That's right. Now, listen to me, Rosa. When you sit down and you see, don't waste no time. Yeah. Let Luigi hold your hand. Which hand? Any hand. Hold your hand. But, Papa, if he holds my hand, how will I eat my popcorn? Oh, I told you, forget about eating. A camel can go eight days without water. See if you could go three hours without popcorn. <laughs> All right, Papa. What else should I do? Now, when the movie gets a nice and a sad... And... You lean over and you lay your head on a Luigi's shoulder. But, Papa, how will Luigi see the picture? Who cares? <laughs> Look, when the play is on and you see the big love scene, yeah. that's when you get your biggest chance, you see? Now, here's what I want you to do. You lean over and you whisper to him, you... Luigi, I like you. You like me. Let's go out and get married now. Papa, can't we wait till the picture's over? Oh. <laughs> what a dumb 
scholar you are. <laughs> Look, Barossa, whenever you ain't sure what to do, just figure things out with your own common sense. Yes, Papa. Then do the opposite. <laughs> I'm sorry, Papa. Oh, that's all right, my baby. Now, good luck, my daughter, and... And... And what? Happy leap year. <laughs> Here you are, sir. Two seats. I'd like to thank, thank you, Mr. Ashera. Oh, it's so nice and dark in here. Oh, pretty Luigi. Both seats are together. Yeah. Now I'm going to find the one for me. <laughs> <laughs> but there's no other seat. Quiet, please. <laughs> Luigi, I can get into this seat. All right, all right. Oh, gee, this is fun. I got the peanuts, candy, chewing gum, peppermint. What do you know? Dinner for everybody. <laughs> yeah, Russia. Russia. Hold up with the photo for later, huh? Let, let, let's watch the picture, huh? All right. Audrey, darling, we can't go on this way. Let's tell Herbert and get it over with. No, Mike. We must have patience, honey. Oh, darling, I love you so. And I love you, sweetheart, so, so much. Luigi, sleep here. You want to get married? <laughs> shh, shh, shh. Who, me? Yeah, you. <laughs> Audrey, wait. It's awful waiting that's killing me. It's been hard on both of us, dear. Audrey Angel, let me hold you close. Oh, darling, darling, darling. Luigi, you want to smell my aftershave lotion? <laughs> not now, not now, Russia. Russia, please, please. Who? Me? Yeah, you. <laughs> Will you mind my seat, please? Oh, sure, Stanny. Say. You're going in the back for candy, huh? No, ice cream. Oh, good. Will you bring me back two bars? All right. Luigi, you want two bars, too? No. No, 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 Russia. But the picture only started, Luigi. You're going to get hungry. <laughs> uh -huh. Maybe later, Russia. I got the money, Luigi. No, no, look at the picture, Russia. Take the ice cream! <laughs> Right there. Here, little boy, here's a, here's a ten cents. Four ice creams is forty cents, mister. Oh, forty, forty cents, huh? Bring it back a two for twenty cents. <laughs> and, and here's twenty cents more for two candy bars. All right, lady. Make sure they got nuts. All right. Say, do you think you could carry some popcorn too, Sonny? Lady, you want I should help him, maybe? <laughs> Such a nice man. Oh, please, please, keep it quiet. I want to look at the picture. Audrey, let's run away. Tonight, my darling. No, honey. They would only bring us back. But it's no good this way, baby. It's no good. Mike, sweetheart, let's not rush things. Oh, Audrey, Audrey, I feel I'm going out of my mind. Hush, baby. Here, put your head on my shoulder. There. How's that? <laughs> Lu Luigi! Yeah, 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 what, what, what? I, 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 I want to tell you something. Well, well, what, what, what is it? I, I... My television says how to be broke tonight. <laughs> Russia, look, look, look at a beautiful girl on the television, huh? Wait, Russia, please, don't talk too much. Eh? Here, lady, the popcorn. Oh, thank you, Sonny. Here, have one for yourself. Thanks. Not the whole bag, one popcorn. <laughs> Here's the candy. 
Oh, good boy. <coughs> Gee, it's dark. And the ice cream. Well, where's the ice cream? I haven't got it. Gee, it must have slopped all over someone's lap. Huh? How about if somebody's a... Well, it's a not the mine. Russia, is it yours? No. Mister? Oh, no, no! <laughs> Come on, stop your crying. Look, Rosa, what's a happen a happen? That's all. I don't cry over spilled milk. Baba was spilled ice cream. <laughs> all right, forget about it. Oh, Baba, I don't think Luigi will ever take me out again. Hey, he don't have to, Rosa. He's now going to be closer to you than he ever was. He will? Yes, while you was in the movies, I figured out a scheme where Luigi's got to see you every day in the week. <laughs> Can you guess how, my daughter? No. <laughs> Neither will he. This is a Pasquale's a secret weapon. <laughs> <laughs> Hurry up, Luigi. Tell us the rest before Miss Spaulding comes in. Well, oh. then we went out to the movies and I decided and I made up of my mind. Uh. I just made up of my mind then, no, no matter what's going to happen to me, I'm not going to see Rosa anymore this year. No, I don't know, Luigi. When that Pasquale starts out on a war against you, he becomes the desert fox of Chicago. <laughs> Quiet. Here comes the teacher, fellas. Good evening, class. Good, Good evening, evening. Class, Good class I was delayed because I came from the principal's office. A new student is joining our class tonight. Oh, a new you student. What a, what a who's the new student, Miss Spalding? Who you think? Mommy, <laughs> it's a bus. <laughs> Well, Mamma Mia, Pasquale has figured out the perfect crime. He's got Rossi in my night school class, and, and I'm going to see her every night in a week. Mamma Mia. I was used to hope 1952 would be a big year for me. But at 250 pounds a big, I'm never dreamed about it. <laughs> Love son, Luigi Basco, Lily Magrant. Friends, the makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum hope you enjoyed tonight's episode of Life with Luigi, and they want to remind you that you can enjoy the comfort and satisfaction of chewing delicious Wrigley's Spearmint Gum just about any time and any place. Chew a stick whenever you feel tense or need a refreshing little lift. Enjoy Wrigley's Spearmint on the job, in your home, and when you're on the go. It always tastes good, and the smooth, pleasant chewing helps keep you feeling at ease and satisfied. So slip a package of refreshing, delicious Wrigley Spearmint gum into your purse or pocket. Keep some handy all the time and enjoy it often, as millions of people do. The makers of Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum invite you to be sure to listen next week at this same time when Luigi Basco writes another letter to his Mama Basco in Italy. Life with Luigi is a Cy Howard production. Pat Burton is associate producer. The script is written by Mac Benoff and Lou Derman and directed by Mr. Benoff. J. Carol Nash is starred as Luigi Basco with Alan Reed as Pasquale, Hans Conrad as Schultz, Jody Gilbert as Rosa, Mary Schiff as Miss Spaulding, Joe Forte as Horowitz, and Ken Peters as Olsen. Music on the direction of Lud Gluskin. Be sure to tune in next week and hear what happens when Rosa attends Luigi's night school class. This is Charles Lyon. This is the CBS Radio Network. 8.30 p.m. Time for Canadian Ace Beer.